Here we go then, Junior X30 final will be coming on your screens in a few seconds time. Let's have a look at the grid. Lewis Bird and Kian Geraghty line up on pole on the uh, front row of the grid. Macaulay Bishop, your championship leader there on third place with Kenzo Craig alongside behind them, Harry Bartle and Harrison Mackey. On row four is Riley Cranham, followed by Fred Green. On row five is Zach Green and Eden Spanswick. Row six is <coughs> George Quartzman. George Quartermain and Monde Jr. Canini are there on row number six with Samuel Woolley and Lewis Islin on row seven. Jensen Graham and Joey Brown line up on row number eight with Henry Carter and David McIntyre on row nine. Row ten sees Leith Khan and Aston Sharp. Then Taylor Orridge, Hayden Massey, and Morgan Moore round out the 23 cart grid for this one. Of course, in the pre-final, we saw uh, Mamassi and Moore didn't make it to the start of the race. Ashton Sharp and Taylor Orridge had some incidents during the race and didn't make it to the finish. Taylor Orridge is right up there in the championship standings at the moment. Second place in the standings, 751 points as we go into this one. So he'll be one to watch from near enough the back of the grid. He'll be wanting to come through and gain some championship points back towards that challenge. But it's Lewis Bird who's looking to stop him on that one. He's third place in the standings, 734 points, and he starts from that pole position. Will he lead through the first couple of corners though? We haven't got long to wait and see as we get it underway. First time of asking. Lewis Bird does indeed hold on and through. Actually, no, Kian Garrett, he's got him at the start. Lewis Bird now has to tuck him behind on the 24 plated cart. They're all going side by side, three wide on the exit, and they're confirmed at the front of your screen is the leader now of Kian Garrity. A couple of drivers nearly forced out wide towards the barrier on the exit there of the first of our hairpins and to the outside. Could be a good line there for a couple of the drivers, and it was good. I think that was Monday Junior Canini getting through on that wide line. Absolutely, and I am now back after. <laughs> don't know what that was. But yeah, as through goes, the number 12 of oh, the number. <coughs> yeah, number 12 goes through. That was Lewis Islin fighting his way back through on this opening lap of the race. Top three already started breakaway already down the inside goes to Macaulay Bishop. Takes second place on the road away from Lewis Bird already. So Lewis Bird points forward, yep, and gets the thumbs up from Macaulay Bishop. They want to work together through this one. They can't let Kean Garrity get away at the front. Of course, it's going to need a lot for Macaulay Bishop to lose out on this championship lead. As there's a bit of a slidey moment oh. in the background for one of the crop promotion carts. So he gets it back on circuit and continues nonetheless. Indeed, look at how quickly Bishop has closed that gap to Kean Garrity. And he's already going to go for it down the inside. Bishop late on the brakes. Who's going to break later? It is Bishop. And he takes the lead as they head through the Stuart S's. Absolutely. And coming down towards it, it's so, so close between those two drivers. Just neck and neck. There's no holds barred at this point. I mean, down towards the final corner. And it's just when he tries to make that move. But the problem is, if he makes the move, all that's going to happen is if he makes gets it wrong, he's going to fall right back gets it right it's well it's going to be great for him but then again he's then at the front so yeah it's certainly figuring out when but there is this line of carts trying to catch and that is a move potentially in the background just trying to see who that was that was a move so yeah for fifth, fifth place, place. So yes. Harry Bartle has gone through on Harrison Mackey there Croc promotion cart through on the Fusion Motorsport cart and it's Fred Green on the E-plate in behind I saw him get well acquainted with the rear bumper of Harry Bartle through the final corner earlier on Still sat there in behind in seventh, now looking for a way through this time on the 21 of Harrison Mackey. Absolutely, and currently still right between each other. And that is very close between those two up at, I believe, the front. Oh, cheeky. Place. That's a perfect move. Very down the cheeky. End by Lewis Bird on Kean Garrity. What a fantastic move that was. And now he's just got to try and hold it. But if they don't work together, they're going to start falling back off Macaulay Bishop, who's currently in the lead. And it's, yeah, they have to work together at this point to catch back up because there's the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, Bishop takes it. Orridge takes it back. He's had a great start already. We're only a few laps into this one. Taylor Orridge on the GP plate, up seven spots. Of course, had that difficulty in the pre-final, but he's making his way back through nicely. Here comes Fred Green down the inside of Harrison Mackey. Really tidy move there from the Jamie Green racing driver. Takes away sixth position. Absolutely. All possible moves up by on the exit. Through goes Harry Bartle. Kenzo Craigie caught napping a bit then. He could lose two spots. Round the outside, tries the E-plate, turns to the inside. Oh, through goes no. the E-plate. Through goes Harrison Mackey as well. Fred Green up to fifth. Mackey up to sixth. Craigie down to seventh, but they're still scrapping on the exit. And I think Craigie's going to potentially try and get back through, but the thing is here, he's trying to fight his way back up positions, and the problem with that is, is if he tries fighting too hard, he could potentially lose time to the carts in front. And that's the thing, he's currently just being caught by the carts behind. He's going defensive on uh, the, oh. the other Jamie Green racing driver of Zach Green. 
He's trying to make his way through. Craigie to the outside. They're getting a bit slidey. Bumping and barging through the right-hander. And the other green, Jimmy Green racing driver of Zach Green is going to head through. But he's on the outside now as they head down to the end of the long straight into the right-hander. Tries to go as late as possible to chop back in. Just about does so. Has to give up one place, though. And through goes one of the drivers in that gaggle. I think it was Drew Monde Canini, possibly. Riley Cranham it was who, get, who got involved. I can't even keep up. There's so much oh, going on. To the outside no. goes, is that Harrison Mackey on the 21? Yes, it is. Rejoin. But through goes one, through goes two. Or most three cards on the outside as well. That's a very, very difficult position for either driver to be in, to be fair there. Because he's going fast around a left-hander. You don't really have a great deal of control over where you are to the left of the circuit, at the very least. But you can control where you are to the right of the circuit. That's for certain. Indeed, indeed, they're all getting a bit bumping and barging, aren't they, in this mid-pack group? It's brilliant racing, but it's not keeping them in with a shot of the top four, though. Harry Bartle, Kean Garrity, Lewis Bird and Macaulay Bishop have scythed off at the front. It was another fastest lap of the race on the last lap for Macaulay Bishop, 47.65. Lewis Bird's keeping with him nicely, 47.76, 47.74 for Kean Garrity, 47.75 for Harry Bartle. All within two hundredth of a second of each other but they can't quite keep on the back of Macaulay Bishop. We'll keep an eye on him out of our window. You don't need to think about that just yet. Let's watch this battle on your screen. The E-plate of Fred Green still at the front of this long, long train of carts. And look at that. Taylor Orridge is it right in the middle of this gaggle, and he now takes the fastest lap of the race. <clears throat> Absolutely. And it's not too far up to Riley Cranham either. They're currently still so together. It's very difficult to figure out who is currently just closer to one another because they're all basically right next to each other. But yeah, it's just very, very close. That's the thing. And I think the main thing here is that was a potential move on the GP plate there. That's a move down the inside of Craig. Is that a move on Craig? It yes, is. It is. What a move there by Lewis Isner, I believe that was. How has is, how is this changed so much through from the pre-final to the final? Craig, you were so quick mm. in the pre-final, getting spot after spot after spot, lap after lap after lap. This one has just gone completely the opposite direction. Five second penalty for Lewis Bird up at the front. Oh, that's a big one. He's just about holding on to the back of Macaulay Bishop, but that is not going to help his charge towards the win of the race. So now effectively, Macaulay Bishop has an almost two second lead over Kean Geraghty. Absolutely, and it's, that's going to be difficult for Lewis Bird because it's not far back, and that's going to drop him to roughly around, will that be just, well, sixth place just about. I think. Will be, yeah. They're all still so close in that mid pack. I don't think we can even call that net that yet. It's not quite yet. But these drivers are so close, they're still batting. They're going to drop further off of the leading carts, I think. So Lewis Bird still has the opportunity now. He would have been told on the Digi flag, but he has that five second penalty as Kenzo Craigie gets one as well. So Kenzo Craigie's race goes from bad to worse. He's dropped eight spots down to 12th place. Yep. Five seconds is going to drop him even further towards the back of the pack. And I think we spotted that one when the cart went wide over the dirt. I think that might have been be what right. that was. And that's why I said at the time, yeah, you, I think that might have been the stewards just noting that. But we don't know. And that's not something we can really comment particularly on. But even so, there's, yeah, it's not been the greatest of race for Kenzo Krogi at all. That's not been ideal. He's been really swinging to and fro in this season. He has a couple of races, a couple of weekends that go really well, and then other ones that just go absolutely terribly. He never seems to have a race where it just goes okay. It's mm. either fantastic or awful for Kenzo Craigie. This one has gone the direction he did not want it to go. No, and he's dropped back quite considerably now, but in terms of everyone else on track, over, it's still immensely close up at the top. I mean, it's, We're still it's watching, under a second. Uh, yeah, still watching this battle for fifth, aren't we, at the moment, headed up by Fred yep. Green. Exactly, and that's still, he's just about staying in the lead of that big battle, but currently that is the E-plate of Fred Green ahead of Canini and Zach Green just behind. And I think they're all just sitting in and just trying to keep line of stern for now, up until when they can start making moves, because if they start now, they're just going to start falling back and they don't really want to have too much of a battle. Uh, what were you saying, mate? Oh, really? <laughs> Not a battle. Yeah, Canini down the battle. inside, late enough on the brakes. How late do you want it, says Canini. Down the inside he goes, takes a spot, up to fifth place, goes one day junior Canini, and what a move on the brakes. Corrected. Zach uh, Green now sits in behind <laughs> him. So, Jay, uh, sorry, not Jamie Green, Fred Green of the Jamie Green Racing crew drops down into eighth because of that one. Through, followed Taylor Orridge as well. Harrison Mackey now gets a five second penalty. He sat there in 12th place. That's not going to help his charge towards the top 10 of the field. But Monday Junior Canini has been really impressive throughout today. And he's continuing that into this final. I see. And they're currently just putting ahead just a little bit. The number 31 of Canini. 
To be fair, that was just a move out of nowhere. I stand corrected on the fact they're not going to battle <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's just perfect timing. It's just it's 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 always the Carters always immediately like to prove us wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. It's just it happens, but. I Ooh. think McCauley Bishop has definitely pulled quite a bit of a gap up at the lead it's as well. Sort of, yeah, it's sort of staying as it was, really. They, um, he just did the same lap time that uh, Lewis, Beer, Lewis Bird did on the last lap. It's staying around about a second between McCauley Bishop and Lewis Bird, which is all McCauley really needs to do, just manage the gap. He may have even noticed that Lewis Bird has that penalty. It would be incredible awareness from McCauley to realise that. But also, he's a driver at the top of his game. I wouldn't put it past him to actually know that there is that five-second gap anyway, and he can just relax across this one. No, exactly. Currently looking at the number 31 of Mondo of Mondo Junior. They're just ahead of Zach Green, and very close behind is the GP plate. So it, yeah, Taylor Orridge, incidentally, who I was wanting to talk about anyway, 14 positions off of the grid. It really 14 impressive. 14 places up. Yeah, Taylor Orridge, you saw with the incident in uh, in the pre-final earlier on, doing a great job. I mean, second in the championship, you would maybe expect such a run through the field from himself. I'm super impressed with Hardy Noah Mamassi. He's up 13 spots as well from the back of the grid. He didn't even make it to the start of the race in the pre-final. He's up into the top 10, ninth spot for the Evolve Motorsport driver. He's doing a fantastic job. Absolutely. And still just in this bit of a holding pattern. Just trying to make sure that we're all staying there, son. I'm not Taylor going to Orridge, say though. that. Yeah, oh, That's absolutely. the pace. Absolutely. And you can see just how close. I was not going to say they're not going to battle because we already know who Don't that goes that, if yeah. I say that. Um, <laughs> but it's, they're stuck currently behind. And I think Taylor Orridge is definitely looking to try and battle because he's just way too close to the cart ahead to be working together through those corners. That would be a very interesting strategy. Go and there we go. Round he goes. And just going to wait and see if he actually did that. Yes, he did. Yeah, you can see him just waiting for the opportunity. Yeah. He saw he got a marginally better exit out of Sunny Bend and thought, well, I'll take this one. Go on. Then down the inside he goes. Late on the brakes. Gets it done. Very nice. Now looking at that rear bumper of Monday Junior Canini. Looking for a top five finish here for Taylor Orridge. He won't know that Lewis Bird has that five second penalty. He's only got about two more seconds to close in to get an extra position up to P4 as well so uh, it's still very much on for a good result here in the final for Taylor Orridge but a, a top three looking unlikely still yeah absolutely and we're just currently watching that group still they're still so close together on track it's not far apart at all and it's just everyone trying to finish I think at this point at the end of the day it's just making their way forward making sure they keep it on the track because as we've seen you can push too hard late into a race. I mean, that is a, it did seem what that's what happened in the earlier races, where it just drops straight off, and it's, it does happen. And drivers know that, and they want to be careful. That is Brown currently just there on your screens, just keeping an eye on this battle currently of the number 31. Yeah, so Orridge now right on the back of Monday Junior Canini. These three following line of CERN and look who's decided to join them it's Fred Green <laughs> and Hardy Noah Mamassi as there you go Orridge doesn't need another invitation down the inside he goes takes away fifth place from Monday Junior Canine and he's going to want to be leading this pack towards the front runners now let's see if Taylor Orridge in a bit of clean air can start to pull away from these five in behind them just in the background Mamassi has gone for the move as well he's through on Fred Green for eight spot so a really impressive race from Amassi as he takes the fastest lap of the race despite making an overtake on that lap, 47.32. He's been mighty, mighty impressive. May also take into account, well, I was going to say takes into account that he won't have used his dry tyres quite as much because he didn't even start the last race. However, it was such a changeable condition. I think in the slippery condition earlier, it wouldn't have worn the tyres out too much. So I think this is just raw pace from Amassi flying through the order on that Evolve Motorsport cart. And he's got three more carts in front of him that he's going to want to overtake now. Yeah, definitely. I think he's certainly got the pace. It really looks like he has the pace to do so. But it's just he's got to keep pushing, basically, if he wants to try and gain those places. And at the end of the day in the championship, it's reasonably close, but not much at this point will change those championship standings, I don't think short of any major incidents that's about it and we don't want that so no indeed yeah Kean Garrity is having a good race he's jumped up into fourth in the standings ahead of Fred Green and he's only going to gain more points because he's going to gain those points from second rather than third as Lewis Bird still has that five second penalty of course don't forget at the end of this one so technically your top three looking at Macaulay Bishop Kean Garrity and Harry Bartle at the moment and Harry Bartle is in the I was going to say a lovely bit of romance, and there is the late move from Mamassi down the inside of the number, number 10, sorry, of Zach Green. 
takes seventh place away from Zach Green, then drops him back. And now the Jamie Green Racing uh, Racing crew nose to tail between Zach and Fred as they continue round the last corner. And I was going to say, yeah, Harry Bartle sat in a bit of no man's land, really. He's got two seconds ahead to Kean Garrity. And then four, three and a half seconds back to Taylor Orridge in fifth. So Taylor has just over a minute to try and close three and a half seconds. I think even for Taylor Orridge, that is a big ask. Exactly. And Henry Massey sitting a very fast lap on that one. Incidentally, he's just set, I believe, a faster, fastest lap than McCauley Bishop. I think you... Yeah, you're right. Just, but it's faster. Just and that's about. Impressive. Lewis Bird has just set the <laughs> fastest lap of the race, though. 47.26 for Lewis Bird. He's not giving up at the end of this one. He's closed the gap back down to seven tenths of a second. They're coming around the final corner now. 40 seconds left to go on the clock. We'll get this lap as they cross the line now. And one more. Here comes the group that we're following, though, around the paddock bend. And now Mamassi chasing down. Canini, who is just in front of him as they head through the first couple of corners. Was that another fastest lap from Lewis Bird? Yes, it yeah. was. He's very, very quick at the moment. He is he, closing the gap. He took about three tenths out of him on that last lap. This could be closer than we think here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, absolutely. He's definitely closing the gap on Cordy Bishop. Going to keep an eye on that gap just to see if he's pulled it anywhere under that half a second that he's currently showing on the timing screens. Well, we often see this with there the Macaulay Bishop. He sort of just backs off a little bit, chills out for the race, realizes, oh, the driver behind me is going to close in. I'll just, I'll just accelerate a bit. I'll just go a bit faster. That's what Macaulay likes to do. Yeah. He just holds it in the, in the bank and just goes, oh, I've got a bit more pace. I'll stick it on this final lap. Check to the shoulders. They come across the line to start the final lap of the race. Absolutely. And currently we've got those two right neck and neck with each other. Here we go. Macaulay Bishop in front of Lewis Bird. Lewis Bird catching up very slightly, but he needs to pull something out of the bag to try and get this done. Macaulay Bishop, just judging by the way he sat in that car, it's just absolutely chill. Yeah. He's, he's just sat there driving the car, look behind, head down, keep going, no problem. Yeah, you can see him just press it, pressing on a little bit more on this yeah. one. As he's putting his head down, activating that human DRS down the uh, down the back straight. Just so trying to extend that gap to Lewis Bird and make sure that there's no ridiculous send through the last couple of corners. Here he comes through the left of Sunny Bend. The next corner they'll see is Paddock Bend, and it does look like it is going to be Macaulay Bishop who holds on to the win here in the Junior X30 final and takes the championship win for 2023. He was fourth in the championship in 2022. This year he'll have the number one plate to go on his cart. For 2024. What a brilliant race from Macaulay Bishop, as expected, as we've seen plenty of times throughout this year. And he wins the championship by a good 28 points as it stands. Of course, we've got some penalties to add in and whatnot. That might change ever so slightly. But either way, Macaulay Bishop is your champion. Exactly. And Keen Garrity jumping up one position right at the end there which is very, very good. One position in the championship, I should add on that one. Indeed, yeah. And obviously gain an extra couple of points with Lewis Bird dropping down with that five-second penalty. But here is your full results from the Junior X30 final here at event number nine. Macaulay Bishop, Lewis Bird and Kean Geraghty are your top three on circuit. Harry Bartle in fourth with Taylor Orridge. What a run through the field. 16 places gained there to get to fifth place. One day, Junior Canini's behind him in sixth with Hardy Noah Massey there in seventh. He was up 15 spots. So great races there from the Crop Commotion cart and the Evolved Motorsport cart. Zach Green, Fred Green and Riley Cranham rounded out the top 10. And behind them, Harrison Mackey, Lewis Islin, Kenzo Craigie and David McIntyre there in 14th. Then it was Aston Sharp, Joey Brown, Jensen Graham, Henry Carter, George Quartermain, Samuel Woolley and Leith Khan. The final of your race finishes there in 21st place. Sadly, we lost Eden Spanswick on lap number three. And Morgan Moore once again not making it to the start. But I'm not sure Morgan Moore has been here today for the premium karting team but either way what a race and there you can see a number of our drivers out of their carts and getting ready to talk to Ailey in the pits but before we go to that we've got a few more advertisements to show you
All right, we're here in Park Ferme after the final of the Junior X30, and I've got my P2 Keen Garrity. Can you just talk about that race and the battle for first? You did a good job to hold on to Macaulay, but you weren't able to grab that P1 in the end. Uh, we had a good start. We got around the outside at the first corner, managed to take the lead, held on to it for, I think, two or three laps, and then got overtaken, and we just didn't quite have the pace to hang on to Macaulay. Amazing. Was there anything particularly challenging about the track? Are you feeling confident after this weekend at Rara? Um, we hadn't done loads of days here. It was our first time here last weekend for the LGM and the weather was quite changeable on the Sunday so we didn't really get much chance to properly test everything we wanted to and with a wet day on Friday we hadn't done loads of laps around here in the dry but apart from that, yeah, it was all alright. And finishing off your season, how are you feeling about your performance overall across the year? Um, I'd like to have got a top three but a few penalties at earlier rounds sort of is what stopped us from getting in the top three. That podium is definitely a good way to finish. So congratulations. Is there anyone you'd like to thank? Mark Litchfield, MDL Motorsport, Dan Ross for Mechanic and then my dad for bringing me. Perfect. Thank you. And congratulations thank you. again. All right. Let's see if we can get our P3 Harry Bartle. Congratulations on a podium there. You came from quite far back in the grid and managed to work your way through. How was that race? Uh, it was a good race, to be honest. We had a good start, so we got a gap to the rest of the field. And then it was a pretty boring race after that. Nothing really happened. And then... I think Lewis got a penalty and I managed to stay inside five seconds, so made it. And when you went into that race, did you think you were going to be able to make your way through the field? As it's quite a tight, tight, tight battle on the Junior X30 grid. Uh, we've had the pace all weekend and we were one of the fastest, so it was definitely possible and couldn't really have gone any better, to be honest. Amazing. Well, congratulations on P3. Is there anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, crop promotion, Grice, uh, my dad, Autoset Cars, uh, Gantt Racewear. And my dog. <laughs> Perfect. What's your dog's name? Rodney. Amazing. Well, congratulations again on your season. All right. <laughs> You're okay. Okay, and now we've got our race winner and our championship winner, Macaulay Bishop. Macaulay, another amazing drive for you. Um, how did that feel quite quickly making your way to the front of the field? Yeah, we had a good start going to P3 and then um, just picked them off one by one. And then obviously we got into the lead, we got a little bit of a gap and then just managed it there really. And I spoke to you earlier that you've had a really consistent season all throughout. What do you think has been the key to the consistent driving? Just out the front, really. Um, qualifying is quite important, I think, in this championship, obviously, because you start the heats where you qualify. So I've had some good qualifying and then um, some good points, uh, point scores. Amazing. How are you going to celebrate? I don't know yet. We'll find out. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got Dan Parker here with your championship plate. So congratulations. congratulations. Welcome to the Junior X30 podium from event number nine of the Vera Tools British Car Championships. We'll start with third place on the podium, Croc Promotions driver number 24, Lewis Bird. Then joining him on the podium, second place also from Croc Promotion, it's the number 73 of Harry Bartle. And taking the top step of the podium, the number nine MDL motorsport driver, Kean Geraghty and his mechanic, Dan Ross. Lovely stuff. Well done, gents. Another round of applause for your Junior X30 podium. Well done, guys.